Earlier this week, the People's Liberation Army Navy announced the completion of a large-scale joint exercise in the Western Pacific, during which the Type 003 Fujian conducted its most ambitious live-fire drills to date. Fleet Commander Vice Admiral Li Dongyu praised Fujian's performance as exceeding all expectations. After coordinated missile launches, electronic warfare sorties, and carrier strike group maneuvers that simulated high-end conflict scenarios beyond the first island chain, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command promptly responded by diverting two additional destroyers and accelerating maintenance on its own carriers, underscoring growing concerns over Fujian's imminent operational debut. China's latest carrier, the Type 003 Fujian, represents a seismic shift in naval power, even without a nuclear reactor. Though China's carrier program is relatively young compared with the U.S. Navy's decades-long experience, Fujian's domestically designed and built systems place it in a class of its own. Underneath its flat, 320-meter deck lies a suite of technologies that until recently were exclusive to America's Ford-class ships. And as sea trials near completion, the carrier is poised to reshape the balance of maritime strength in the Western Pacific and beyond. Construction began at Shanghai's Jiangnan Chongqing Shipyard in late 2018, where more than 3,000 engineers, welders, and technicians worked around the clock to piece together hull blocks that weigh over 1,800 tons each. By June 17, 2022, Fujian slid into the Huangpu River. From the outset, Chinese state media hailed Fujian not only as a military asset but as a symbol of national industrial prowess. China's first fully indigenous aircraft carrier, free of foreign blueprints or imported modules. At roughly 320m long and 78m wide, Fujian displaces approximately 80,000 tons at full load. It features a completely flat flight deck, no ski jump ramps, and four tightly grouped electromagnetic catapults. This electromagnetic aircraft launch system replaces the outdated steam catapults used on China's earlier Liaoning and Shandong carriers. MALS accelerates fixed-wing jets from 0 to 240 km per hour in just a few seconds, reducing airframe stress. And enabling up to 160 launches per day, nearly 30% more than China's previous carriers could manage. In trials, Fujian's MALS achieved launch rates matching those of U.S. Ford-class ships, surprising many Western observers who assumed China would lag by years. Behind the flight deck sits a compact diesel-electric power plant, rated at more than 120 megawatts. Generators feed both propulsion motors and all shipboard systems, including the energy-hungry MALS. And powerful Type 346B active electronically scanned array radars. These next-generation radars can track hundreds of air and surface targets simultaneously at ranges exceeding 400 kilometers. While the Central Combat Information Center integrates satellite feeds, over-the-horizon targeting data, and encrypted communications with China's northern and southern fleets, a secure fiber-optic network links Fujian to shore-based command nodes in real-time, ensuring rapid decision-making in high-tempo scenarios. Fujian embarks carrier-based fighters and support aircraft in far greater variety and number than its predecessors. The Shenyang J-35, a stealthy naval variant of the FC-31 airframe, can carry up to six medium-range air-to-air missiles internally, while maintaining a combat radius of more than 1,000 kilometers. Early warning duties fall to the KJ-600, a, a twin-boom turboprop radar plane capable of detecting low-flying targets beyond the radar horizon of the ship itself. China also plans to deploy Y-20 UAV drones for reconnaissance and anti-ship missions, expanding Fujian sensor and strike envelope by hundreds of kilometers. Crew efficiency has been a major focus. Whereas Liaoning and Shandong require over 2,000 sailors, Fujian operates with a core crew of approximately 1,600, thanks to automation in machinery control and weapons handling. Digital twin simulators in Shanghai and Qingdao trained carrier pilots and deck crews for more than 20,000 flight deck evolutions before Fujian ever left port. These real-time simulators use full-motion visuals and haptic feedback to mimic sea swell, aircraft catapult launches, and arrestor wire landings, reducing onboard accidents during trials. Fujian began first sea trials in September 2022, testing propulsion, navigation, and basic communications. A second series of trials in May 2023 validated MALS performance under full load. While a 2024 exercise tested the carrier's damage control systems by simulating multiple onboard fires and flooding scenarios. 
By January 2025, naval aviators conducted the first takeoff and landing cycles using J-35 jets and KJ-600 aircraft. And deck handling teams proved they could embark and recover up to 64 aircraft per 24-hour period. Official sources indicate final trials will conclude by mid-2025, with full operational capability slated for late 2025 or early 2026. Strategically, Fujian underpins China's ambition to project power beyond the first island chain. While previous carriers operated largely in the South China Sea, Fujian's advanced sensors, long-range aircraft, and robust command network enable sustained presence in the Western Pacific and even the fringes of the Indian Ocean. Beijing envisions deployment around disputed features such as the Paracels and Spratly Islands, supporting Chinese Coast Guard and Marine Militia vessels. In contingency operations involving Taiwan, Fujian could provide air cover and early warning, complicating U.S. carrier strike group deployments in support of Taipei. Cost estimates for Fujian vary, but experts place construction and initial trials at around 8 billion U.S. dollars, roughly half the price of a single Ford-class carrier. Moreover, by mastering MALs domestically, China avoids the high maintenance and upgrade costs of steam systems. Reports indicate that lessons learned on Type 003 will feed directly into Type 004, China's first planned nuclear-powered carrier, which could break ground as early as 2027. Nuclear propulsion would grant virtually unlimited endurance, allowing sustained operations far from Chinese shores without refueling. In response to Fujian's looming entry into service, the U.S. Navy has accelerated maintenance on its own carriers and deployed additional destroyers and cruisers to the Pacific Fleet. Joint exercises with Japan and Australia in recent months have tested Allied readiness to operate alongside Ford-class carriers against advanced adversary systems. The appearance of a fully capable non-nuclear carrier equipped with MALs and AESA radars has catalyzed new wargame scenarios in Washington, where planners assess how to counter Fujian's long-range sensors and strike aircraft. Beyond hard power, Fujian serves as a potent symbol of China's growing self-reliance in high-technology industries. From shipbuilding to electromagnetic systems to stealth aircraft design. Each milestone, from the precision welding of deck plates to the live-fire tests of shipborne missiles reinforces Beijing's message that no aspect of carrier construction is beyond China's grasp. For aspiring maritime powers around the world, Fujian demonstrates that cutting-edge carrier technology no longer resides solely in Washington. It now spans Shanghai's shipyards as well. As sea trials wrap up and the carrier prepares for its maiden deployment, Fujian stands at the forefront of a new era. It signals that the Asia-Pacific is no longer the U.S. Navy's uncontested domain. With a deck that can launch stealth fighters, early warning planes, and drones in rapid succession. Supported by digital command networks and modern defensive systems, Fujian embodies China's vision of near seas defense evolving into genuine far seas protection. In the decades ahead, this vessel will not merely defend China's maritime approaches, it will carry Beijing's strategic ambitions across the horizon. As Fujian prepares to sail into service later this year, one question remains at the heart of Beijing's bold gamble. By foregoing nuclear propulsion in favor of a diesel-electric platform, has China struck the perfect balance between cutting-edge capability and cost-effective pragmatism? Or will the absence of a reactor ultimately limit Fujian's global reach? And more broadly, does the emergence of a non-nuclear supercarrier signal a new era in which nuclear power is no longer the sole measure of maritime prestige? Let us know what you think, is Fujian a masterstroke that will redefine carrier warfare, or merely a stepping stone toward China's next, nuclear-powered leviathan? Share your thoughts in the comments below.